Myri Black was elected in the UK Parliament at the age of 20 years old. Briscovia Alangat was elected in the Ugandan Parliament at the age of 19 years old. We have individuals like Justin Trudeau, people like Emmanuel Macron, who are already taken in as the Prime Minister of their respective countries at the age of 39 years old. But while we look at examples abroad, where do we stand as the youth of Malaysia? Are we equivalent to them? Do we respect youth power? Similarly, like our, for, for, uh, our foreign allies? Are we behind them? If you look at the Youth Development Index, YDI, when it comes to political participation, Malaysia is ranked 47th out of 51 countries, woefully behind even our neighbouring partners like Indonesia, Singapore, Thailand, even Cambodia. But it doesn't stop there. While they have their Myri Blacks and Justin Trudeau, even in the Malaysian parliament today, we only have 9% when it comes to representation of young people. And mind you, in Malaysia, the youth, the category of youth is not below 20 or it's not below 25 like other countries, it's below 40 years old. And even then, the representation is only at a miserable 9%. What has happened? Were we like this before in the 1960s and 1970s? Or is this a new phenomenon? And in my talk today, I'd like to focus on that. I'd like to focus on the challenges which young people face and what can be done to overcome those challenges, to ensure that the voices of young people, that the youth power will be embedded in the fundamental moral fabric of our beloved nation, is to ensure that we will no longer sit behind our foreign allies, that we will no longer just be able to look up to people like Justin Trudeau, Emmanuel Macron, Myri Black, but we have those very versions in our country better and more in numbers. And that will be the focus of today's speech. So I'd like to start off by reflecting on the challenges. And while I reflect on the challenges, I'll also briefly share about my personal experiences when I got into politics. The first and most important challenge which we must overcome as a collective is youth apathy. And I'm sure all of us would have heard this, this term before. The most recent compilation by, done by Medica Center showed that more than 60% of young people couldn't care about politics as they like to focus on a lot of other issues. More depressingly, two-thirds of young people below the age of 30 years old have yet to register as voters, the most basic fundamental freedom given to us as citizens of Malaysia. And to some extent, we cannot simply blame the youth. We can't simply point to them and say, you are ignorant, you choose to remain this way, and as a consequence, you will forever remain in this vicious cycle. At times, you need to reflect, what's the reason behind it? What caused them to be driven down in that very tunnel? At times, it's because of the visions which exist in our nation, but also because of the structural reason which precludes young people from entering political structures so that they can represent themselves and speak for themselves and not just delegate that power to other people or towards the older generation. And I remember this. I remember when I first started entering the world of politics when I was 19 years old, when I was selected into the Padana Fellowship Program. It's an internship program where 40 youths of Malaysia will be placed under different ministers. And I remember when I was in that program, I focused a lot more on research work. I worked in a think tank before, where I wrote a paper called Peng Islahan Amno. It's calling Reforming Amno from Within. At the same time, I wrote about reforming political Islam in Malaysia. And while a lot of papers were wrote, despite the fact that due to unique connections, I'm able to push for these papers, these papers to be read by those in government and those in the top echelons of governance. In the end, they'll come back to me and they'll say, despite all of this might be theoretically correct, but what's the purpose if we implement all of this, but in the end, young people still choose not to vote? Their voices are still not heard. Their demands will not be taken into consideration when we ourselves do not take up the fundamental role and responsibility to represent ourselves and making ourselves heard 
through the very basic voting process. But that's just one of the problems, which is on youth apathy. But the second one is something which is very close to my heart, something which I faced from before up to today, but something which still gives me hope, or at least the, the push to continue, which is the belittling of youth power within existing political structures. I think we've all heard this before. Hey, kenapa kau nak masuk, sorry. Why do you want to enter politics? You're too young. You're so young. Do something else. Join the corporate sector. Focus on your job before this addict. Be a researcher. Join the think tank. Get rich. And then after that, only then you join politics. It sounds like an ideal solution, but in reality, it is not. The point in which young people from the start are already labelled as empty cans, as people who are, in who are unable to speak the truth, to critically assess a particularly important national issue, signals the depression of intellect in the country. Because it effectively says that young people cannot do, cannot discuss, cannot debate, can have dialogues about important national issues. So to show an example, when I got, when me and a few others decided to co-found a political party, even at the beginning, I remember, when I was made one of the co-founders and we were, and I was fighting like hell to ensure that the youth age will be reduced to 35 years old, to put term limits, which will ensure that there is a continuous refreshing of power structures. Every time I propose this, there will be some voices who will say, Saya dah dalam politik lebih 40 tahun. I've been in politics for more than 40 years. What do you know? And that's the most common response I received, even by some of those who are perceived as my allies. What more if okay, I don't want to you know, bring my best to be as neutral as possible? It exists in both spectrums, in both sides. But it is a problem. However, if we merely bow down to that belief, if we don't come up in numbers, that means showing that young people care and want for that change, we will never be able to get it. And we did get it in the end. How? When I'm able to show, when I just have a very open selection, we have a CV selection process of picking leaders, when we got more than 10,000 and we pulled all of them, when the vast majority said that we want for the youth age to be limited at 35 years old, we want term limits, we want to ensure that more women are given positions in the top leadership. When that happened, and when you come in numbers, those things will be heard. Therefore, it is a self-fulfilling prophecy. If we choose to remain apathetic, if we choose to remain outside of the structures of power, in the end, it will be those who do not represent our viewpoints, who do not speak for us, who might be of a completely different generation, who will end up representing our voices. And only when it is too late will we realize that our omission, that our inaction has led to a terrible situation which none of us wanted. The final part of my speech, I like to focus on the solutions. I'm supposed to have a timer. Is anyone timing? Okay, just signal. Please do signal. Yeah, I thought like, yeah, cool. Um, so there are three things I like to forward here. The first and the most basic one is reforming AUKU. Very briefly, AUKU is a law which restricts mahasiswa or undergraduates like yourself to speak up, debate, have dialogues about important national issues in universities. I know that because I've been a victim of that as well. When I started speaking up during my final year in university, I was not allowed to teach debates anymore, not only in my beloved university, but in other public universities. My job as a part-time lecturer was taken away. But if you aim me, it's fine. But my students as well, who are also debaters, literally three days before they were about to fly to the United States to represent Malaysia, then they were, that trip was cancelled. <laughs> because of their proximity with me, which signals a problem there. But let's reminisce to where Malaysia stood before. In the 1960s and 1970s, we were never like this. On average, we had at least 20% of youth parliaments or member of parliaments in the youth age category. There were at least three ministers or chief ministers below 35, not even 40, 35 years old. And there are a lot. From, Datuk Sri An from both sides, Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim, Ibrahim Ali, Zahid Hamidi, Tun Dr. Mahade, 
Rahim Tambi Chik, Tan Sri Rais Yatim, I can name so many. Even Datuk Sri Najib Raza was elected as a parliamentarian at the age of 23 years old. Became a chief minister at the age of 28 to 29, 29 years old. Do you know the youngest minister in Malaysia today is only 41 years old? The youngest. That gap, and I believe that gap happened because Auku was introduced. Because back then, youth leaders, critical thinkers, could use universities as a platform for them to discuss on important issues so that in the end that their voices will be heard and the following which they have will in the end lead to national leaders taking their views into account. But where are we at today? Where we say in high school, just focus on your SPM. In universities, focus on your studies, don't care about politics. Once you exit university, focus on building your career for the next 5, 10, 15 years. And only after that, when you are 40 years old, if you still care about politics, will you enter. And that's a structural problem. And becomes a cycle as the age was bigger and bigger and bigger. We need to change that. The second part which we need to change is to ensure that more young people are pushed in the front line of politics. And it is a lie, it is a categorical lie if there are those who tell you that if you care about national issues, your academics will suffer. I remember hearing this. At the beginning, even my parents said that to me. No. But that was the same reason given to me when I wanted to debate, when I wanted to focus a lot of my time engaging debates, right, to travel a lot across the world. But while I debate, while I care about national issues, my academic back at home did not slide down, instead got better. I don't have to talk about my academic achievements and where that's gotten me to, but I'll show you a few examples besides me. Daniel Abdurrahman, my senior, who was one of the best debaters in Malaysia and Asia, who ended up getting to Oxford University. And I believe that it is these very experiences which allow us to get into these respective universities. It is a lie if there are those who tell you that academics is the be-all and end-all and you should ignore everything else. But then what's the way forward there? Once you push more young people into the limelight, that's when young people will see politics is not only a sport dominated by the political elite. And we've seen that changed, especially in some political parties. Again, I don't want to mention names. I think you can read up about it. For example, one particular side has three times more youth parliamentarians than one particular side. And if you look, the reason behind why youth support increased for one particular side <laughs> is because of the number of young people propelled in the public limelight. Because they represent the voice of the youth. They no longer just say that, well, an old person represents and young people simply do not matter or their voices can be represented by other generations. But I think that has to change. But in order for that change to happen, we need a lot more critical thinkers, thought leaders in your respective community, university leaders, to speak up, build your own rapport, build your own reputation, build your own support base to ensure that no matter which side you pick, it doesn't matter whether it's the government, opposition, third force, it does not matter. But once your views are taken into serious consideration, when you start speaking up, when you start building the support, once you start gaining the meaningful experience of caring about national issues from young and fighting about it because you believe in it, in the end, whichever side you like to enter, they will go for you. And we can, again, I'm not don't have to use my example, use past examples. Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim. He built his rapport in university as a student leader under Abim. And in the end, pass. Amno, all political parties were aiming to get him because of the support base, support base which he built from young. But that should be the aim for young people today. You have your ideals. And I'm not here to say that one party ideals is better than the other. Everyone, everyone's views should be respected. And I will respect that. But I really hope that at least your views will be at, will be expressed, and you ensure that those very views will not just be kept to yourself, but will be forwarded and accepted 
in a political environment which is youth-friendly. It may be difficult at the beginning. There will, be, there will be those who will jeer, boo, and will label you as an empty can or as a person who can't do much. But those are challenges which we must confront as a collective. Gen X, sorry, Gen Y and Gen Z as a collective holds more than 50% of the population. Our collective voice on a minimal takes up 30% of the voter base in Malaysia. In the last election, only a 5% swing to any side can be the determinant of winning and losing. It is a lie if someone out there tells you that your voice does not matter. It does. Every single voice matters. Every single vote counts. Every single Facebook, Twitter, Instagram post about the national issue matters. You have the power, you are empowered to do so. And if we as a collective, regardless of our political beliefs, stand united as one, no matter which party we enter, no matter which political framework or ideology we subsume, absolutely no political party can ignore and discard the voices of the youth. And from there onward, we will see the complete rejuvenation and recalibration of our political cycle, which will be a lot more youth-friendly. And I'm very sure that each and every one of us in this room have our very own customized version of that Malaysian dream. The Malaysian dream which, ca which simply cannot ignore the voices of young people as it is a, an inclusive dream, a dream for the future which helps each and every single Malaysian regardless of race and religion. I chose this dream and I chose this path to craft my very own Malaysian dream. May be difficult at the beginning, there must be necessary sacrifices which must be made, either through jobs, academic opportunities, or job opportunities. However, I know at the end that the very reason why I stepped foot into this field is to ensure that whatever objectives or dream I have can be realized and actualized in a short time span. Some will say that politics is like a marathon. I disagree. I want to see changes taking place as quickly as possible because I do not want my Malaysian dream to be delayed. And my dream, very briefly, I know maybe a lot of us share the very same dream despite we may use different routes, is to ensure that each and every single young person's voice will be taken into account, that university students, regardless whether it's public or private, will be listened to, so that education, good quality education, is given to each and every single Malaysian, regardless of race and religion, to ensure that job security and high pay is ascertained, but most importantly, is to ensure that I will be able to give a Malaysia back not only for my generation, but for the future generation. And no matter how much pain and suffering we have to go through, as long as our eyes are focused and dedicated on that very dream, on the construction of that dream, it will be worth it. Let us not forget that this is not only my Malaysia, your Malaysia. This is our Malaysia forever together. Thank you very much.